Okay. Hi, everyone. If you have watched the news at all, you've seen that mortgage rates have ticked up and we're getting a lot of um, uncertainty and even misinformation. My goal is to replace fear with education. And my name is Kate Westerlin. I'm a loan officer with First Home Mortgage, and I have an incredible treat today. I'd like to introduce you to um, James Bulb. James, how do I say your last name? Actually, I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> James Boblitz. Yep. <laughs> James Boblitz. Um, he comes to us with 15 years of capital markets experience um, from trading, trading stocks and bonds to mortgages. He has been the um, vice president of capital markets here at First Home Mortgage, the number one purchase lender in the state for a year now. Um, and prior to that, he was with Compass Analytics for over 10 years. To give you some context on that, they worked with lenders nationwide regarding um, risk management and strategic advisory services. Um, and he's even taught classes for the Mortgage Bankers Association, and he has uh, participated in nationwide conferences for the Mortgage Bankers Association regarding capital markets. So we really have the creme de la creme to help us understand and break <laughs> down what is happening. Um, so with that said, we're just going to kind of dive in. Um, and James, you know, one of the primary questions that we get a, as a loan officer is, what's my interest rate? Um, that's that's the million dollar question. And usually I say, well, that depends on a number of different factors. So can you help us understand what drives and impacts interest rates? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to your point, it's a really great question. It's certainly a very common question right now as well, as uh, rates are rates are pretty volatile. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's a complicated question. Um, any market and interest rates in the mortgage market are no exception. They're they're really based on tens, hundreds, thousands of different inputs, and all those different inputs uh, have you know include projections and probabilities and you know all these different things kind of together. Uh, so, so again, the mortgage market uh, and the interest rates that derive from them, they're, they're really no exception. There's lots of different things that contri uh, can contribute overall. Um, the big, the big you know, kind of elephant in the room uh, right now is the Federal Reserve. Um, so the Federal Reserve is the United States Central Bank. Um, it's the entity that, uh, that controls our money supply, um, our banking system. It kind of seems like they control the world uh, a lot of the times. They have a tremendous amount of influence on the overall global economy. Um, but to be a little bit more specific, the Fed regulates the banking system and it has a ton of influence there. So if you're a bank, um, you know, kind of taking a step back, the way that you make money is you, you take deposits, which is a fancy way of you borrow money from individuals, right? And, and you make loans, right? And so let's say that you pay out 2% in deposits and you lend money at 6% on your loan. Well, you make that spread as a bank, right? In this case, 6 minus 2 or 4% right? And that's your income. Well, the Fed controls um, uh, how much of that bank's capital they can actually lend out. And they also uh, control um, uh, the interest rates as well, the short-term rates. Um, they have a great deal of influence uh, on the rates that banks actually charge each other. So, so they, um, you know, they kind of use their role in moderating the economy to, to control a lot of what's, what's going on in the banking sector. Um, another thing that, that is really, really critical to setting interest rates is the bond market as a whole. So the, the U.S. government uh, borrows money uh, to fund their operations, just like a business or, or household for that matter. Um, they issue debt, and this debt is called a treasury bond. Uh, <clears throat> treasury bonds are some of the most commonly traded assets in the world. Um, more than $600 billion with a B um, is traded every single day. So it's this really, really important market um, that, that we see, right? And so most, uh, one of the most common treasuries is the so-called 10-year treasury, which is just like it sounds, is a 10-year uh, loan uh, from the US government and it pays interest. So when investors are thinking about where to put their money, they look at the treasury market, for example, and they say, okay, I can earn, you know, say right now about three and three quarters percent on a 10-year treasury. Um, and they might say, okay, or option B, what if I invest in a mortgage? What if I invest in a 6% mortgage? Is that a good, um, is that a good return for me? Like I'm taking on maybe a little bit more risk, um, but hey, I'm getting a higher return, right? 
So very often, uh, that's the way that an investor will think, and, and a mortgage will be quoted kind of that way as well, based on a so-called spread to the treasury. So how much of a premium do I need over that 10-year treasury um, to invest in a mortgage? Um, and then finally, the big one, and we're all hearing about this today, would be, uh, would be inflation. Inflation really, really matters uh, in the context of setting interest rates. Uh, it's been a very long time uh, since in this country we had to deal with inflation. Um, but, you know, ask anyone that's a little bit older, right, uh, that lived through the 70s and 80s, and it's uh, near and dear to their heart. Uh, when inflation increases, the Federal Reserve, back to them, uh, they raise short-term interest rates. And they're trying to, what they're trying to do is they're trying to slow down the economy. Um, they're trying to get prices to, to stop rising quite so fast, right? So, so again, when short-term rates increase, um, these banks that I mentioned earlier, you know, they still need to make their profit margin, right? And so longer term rates uh, are typically going to follow. Um, and so again, when, when inflation calms down, when prices you know, calm down a little bit, the Fed pivots to promoting growth, they reduce short term rates and uh, longer term rates follow. And again, that lets uh, mortgage rates ease. So that was a whole lot, <laughs> but it's a whole lot of these different things together. Uh, there's obviously quite a few significant ones that I left out, but, but those three right now at least are, are really the biggest drivers. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, James. That, you know, helps us to understand why are interest rates so volatile right now? We're getting all of this new information and there are so many things that we can't control or predict when it comes to the economy. Um, so with that said, you know, I know you kind of hit on inflation and everybody wants to know, well, you know, Kate, is now the time to buy and what's going to happen with interest rates? And, you know, what do you think in the next six to 12 months? So I'd like to ask, you know, when will the Fed be satisfied? We understand that they are taking a really um, strong approach to curbing inflation. Do you have an idea of you know, what is the benchmark they're trying to reach and what does that mean for interest rates? Yeah, yeah, it's a fair, it's the billion dollar question. It's probably the billion dollar question for that matter, right? So, <laughs> so, so taking a step back, you know, the Fed does want some inflation. Um, they actually have an explicit goal of 2% inflation annually. And it, it, kind of in their view, um, prices increasing, but increasing slowly year over year, helps everyone in the economy make decisions, right? That includes businesses, households, um, individuals, right? So the Fed has two explicit goals. Uh, you'll sometimes hear them called a, a quote unquote dual mandate. Um, and that is helping the economy achieve uh, full employment as well as promoting broad price stability. So full employment, price stability. So uh, let's use a, an example that's near to all of our hearts. So in the last couple of years, uh, what, what's the housing market been doing, right? We've been having bidding wars. We've been having houses dramatically selling over asking, you know, three, four, 14 offers, right? Um, so, so the result of that has been that the average home price um, is increasing by much more than 2%, right? No, no secret, just look at the conforming loan limits and all that stuff. Well, the Fed would look at that and they would say, that's not good for anyone, this ultra frothy ho uh, housing market. And, and the reason for that is, it's hard in this, you know, with their, their, their vision, their goal of stable prices, right? It's hard for a consumer to make a good, sound, disciplined, prudent, whatever word you want to say, um, uh, decision, um, especially for such a major purchase when you have, you know, the, the pr prices are jumping around so much and you really feel like you have to act now or the house is going to go, right? They want steady, predictable data. That's what they want, right? Now, that's not to suggest that they don't uh, ever want to see increases in value. You know, it's fine, for example, for the stock market to increase, you know, 20%, right? But when uh, eggs and milk and flour and gasoline, your rent, you know, you name it, right? All these common daily items uh, are increasing so dramatically, that's where they really start to lose sleep. Um, and so what they do is they say, you know, hey, we need to put a stop to this. And that's when they begin to, to raise interest rates. So... You know, fast forwarding to today, uh, in the in the most recent, you know, in this economic cycle, you know, if you take a step back, we were coming out of something unprecedented, uh, or at least not for quite some time, namely the the COVID nineteen pandemic and the resulting lockdowns, right? So it was it was of course very natural for everyone to have pent up demand. Um, it was very natural to have disrupted supply chains, and so the Fed looked at that and they said, um, you know, I. I Yes, we're seeing some inflation, but this was always going to happen, and it's going to be short term. The word that they kept throwing around was transitory, right? So they were like, "Oh no, it's, it's nothing to worry about. It'll it'll moderate." Well, that wasn't the case, and, and we're in the present situation. 
they've they've since done a mea culpa. They've since said, whoops, that's our mistake. And, and so too has the uh, the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. But the inflation cat's kind of out of the bag. And what they need to do now is bring it back down, right? So again, one of the best ways to do that, and it's painful for all of us, is to, to raise those short-term rates. They need to slow the economy down. And uh, when you increase the cost of borrowing, that's a really effective way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So just to wrap up, I have one last question. If there was one thing that you wish loan officers, realtors, or even home buyers understood that maybe they're not really clear on, what would that be? Like what in this environment and with the information that's out there, is there anything that you think people don't have a full understanding of that they could have a better understanding of? You know, I think I think the there's so many misconceptions around the role of the Federal Reserve and what it means when the Fed raises interest rates. For example, um, you know, a lot of people think, uh, hey, I saw a headline that the Fed raised rates. That means that my mortgage went from five percent to five and three quarters, or whatever it happens to be. Right? The Fed raised rates 75 basis points. Um, that that's not the case. You know, what they're what they're doing is they are influencing uh, uh, interest rates, but they're not explicitly setting them. Right. So I think that that's really important to know. I think the other thing that I would really emphasize is, you know, some, sometimes um, I wake up in the morning and obviously I read a fair amount of uh, economic uh, articles and so on. Right. And, and 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 so often you're talking about things that seem like they're not particularly connected, like uh, in the last in the la just this week, for example, uh, there was a great deal of news out of the UK um, about some of the inflation that they're seeing and, you know, what they've done to try to counteract that. And that's caused a great deal of volatility in my personal life uh, in terms of what the, what the market's done, right? Um, the thing that I would emphasize to everyone is that we really do live in a global economy. Um, and, and that's something that is just, in my view, like so critical to understand. You know, it's, it's easy for all of us, and myself included, to just focus on, you know, kind of our day-to-day -day lives and, and our personal experiences and, 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 and to read some of the national articles about um, overall demand and so on, if you're so inclined, in the U.S. But the thing that I would really emphasize is, um, again, our role in the global economy uh, is such that uh, economies all throughout the world are really going to impact the, the treasury market in the U.S., and that, in turn, is going to impact uh, our overall interest rates. So I guess it's just kind of the recognition and the realization that, that again, we do live in this global economy and that um, you know, everything that's happening throughout the world uh, is really going to affect us as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, James, thank you so much for your time. And you know, everybody who's watching this, please know we are going to do everything that we can to bring you the most accurate information and updates regarding lending. We have the most amazing team here at First Home. So if you have questions, please give me a call. My name is Kate Westerlin. I'm with First Home Mortgage. Um, and that's all for this afternoon. Thank you so much.